What is the best method for using notes or a cheat sheet during a video interview? In today's video, we're going to talk about everything you need to know as it pertains to using notes or a cheat sheet. And we're really only going to focus in on three items, how, what, and why. And I'm going to screen share multiple times to really show you what the setup looks like. So let's dive right in. Item one is the how. And I really want to focus in on and talk about the how your notes always need to be below you. And the reason why your notes need to be below you is because the smallest eye shifts here or here or here are very, very noticeable to your interviewer. And trust me, I do this every day and I can notice small eye shifts. I always know when my clients are reading off of a page, off of a script, etc. So be really, really careful. You get some advice to put them on your screen, but that is a really, really difficult item to do. And I'll show you in my screen share why. So what does this look like? So this is the trickiest part that people aren't talking about. You're always gonna have your pen in your hand and you are always going to write down the question because we wanna make sure that we're answering the question. It is a critical, critical item. So you'll have your pen in the hand and then as you look down to write down the question, your notes will also be down below you. So it's gonna look something like this. And I know I'm just sharing um, a really high level script. So on one side, we're just gonna have some high level notes and then we're gonna have our interview notes on the other side. And I'll go more into a screen share here in a moment, but this is basically what it looks like. And I know you might have bad handwriting, I definitely do but the typing just becomes a major distraction for your interviewer. They might even think you're looking things up. So no typing, we always have to handwrite these items. And this way you'll have your notes right below you. And remember, they can't track eye contact when you're looking down and you're looking at your notes and writing out the question. So you can come back up and it just becomes a nice and easy reference point. Now, I do want you to have a few notes on your screen. There's actually two items I want on your screen. I want some very, very high level notes. We're talking about 10 words or less, just so you can see them big and bold. And then on the other side, if timing is tricky for you and it's tricky for most people, then we're also going to build in a Google stopwatch. So, I just want to show you the screenshot that I did so you can see what it looks like if you were to go into an interview. Okay, this is your ideal screen share setup. And so the item obviously that we want to focus in on are the items that are highlighted on the left because these are your real cheat sheet high level notes. But this is what a classic setup could look like. So. Eric, my product manager, he's on top and he's close enough to the camera that even if I'm looking at him, it looks like I'm looking at the camera. That's really important. Again, on the left is notes. And if there's any sort of challenge you have with the amount of time you spend on your answers, too short, too long, a challenge for most people, you're going to want to try and use that Google stopwatch. Now, I strongly encourage you to practice using the stopwatch with somebody else just so you get comfortable with it. But Let's go to these items on the left, the notes. So there's a couple of body language reminders. These are two of the most critical items. You just wanna to remember to smile, especially if you're not a smiley person. And then shoulders back, just constantly bring your shoulders back. It will force your head up and exude confidence. And then these are some classic other items that come up with clients. So short situation, we always need to shorten our situations. We need to make sure on open-ended questions, we're using CFAS. We definitely want to close our clarifying questions. We want to really focus in on repeatable results in our behavioral answers. And then some clients struggle to bring in more of the female aspect. They say him, him, him. So the she, her could also be a good reminder for somebody who just tends to focus on men when they talk about stakeholders, CEOs, etc. But you're gonna look a little bit away from the camera because you don't want to be locked in. So these are high enough level details and they're big enough where you're not gonna really be staring at them, but they're just good constant reminders. And again, with the stopwatch item, you're just gonna to have to play around with that a little bit, but this is what a screen should really look like. Item two is the what. 
So the amount of items you put on your cheat sheet, it's really up to you. What is really memorable that you feel like maybe it doesn't need to go on there? Then what are your just tricky sticking points that for whatever reason, your brain just will not recall those items? Put them on the sheet. And again, as I showed you in the last item, I kind of showed you what it looks like when I wrote it out in my notebook. I also want to show you what it looks like in a doc because it's really important to understand the what. And so if I was going into an interview tomorrow, there's a few items that I would really want to focus in on. I would want to focus in on some classic questions with high level bullets like tell me about yourself and why the company. I absolutely want to just have my high level clarifying question areas because that will help me focus my clarifying questions. I definitely want to write out my frameworks. We're thinking mostly like three frameworks ideally. And then I want to have my behavioral answers and I want to title them. Just title them. We're not going to actually put anything else, but it's just like sometimes we can't remember all of our examples. So we just have them written down just to bring them up for memory. Now, I just want to go ahead and show you a screen share of what the doc that I created looks like. Now, I wrote all the answers out because a lot of us don't have printers. I don't have a printer. So that's why I kind of transferred it in handwriting. But this is what it would look like in doc form. And I'm going to put that doc in the YouTube description so you can copy it and use it as well. Okay, so this is what my cheat sheet looks like. And so at a high level, sometimes with the tell me about yourself question or the why company question, it can stress us out a little bit. So I just wanna highlight my three key skills or strengths as it pertains to tell me about yourself. I wanna focus in on the three core areas I wanna talk about when it comes to why the company. Then, my go-to clarifying questions. I just at a high level want to remember with each question, what are some good follow-up questions? Of course, you're going to have nuanced questions based on the question being asked of you, but these are some good go-to ones that I always want to reference or be thinking about. Then the frameworks. So I've listed out three. I think three is a pretty good number but it's really gonna be up to you, but I would kind of focus in on and have a few. These are my three go-tos, operational, collaboration, and tech. And then the big one on behavioral examples. These are actual examples from my career. And so all I've done is title them. It's just so I don't remember, oh, I had that withdraw sourcing project and I had totally forgotten about it when I get into the interview, but it's the perfect answer for this question. So just have your go-to behavioral examples titled. And of course, we're going to have those classic ones like a conflict or a mistake, but we're also going to want to have our most complex items just titled. It's going to be so helpful. We can't write out all the details of our behavioral answers. It will be so obvious that we're reading off a script, but just to call them to memory so we don't forget the examples, this is going to be one of the most critical facets of the cheat sheet. Item three is the why. So why are we doing this? Well, there's a couple major reasons. Number one is it just keeps us organized. Number two is it acts like a safety net. It's just knowing we have a couple of items to reference at a really high level will remove some of the anxiety. And that's really important too. But remember, we're at a disadvantage. We can't just jump up to a whiteboard. People can't feel our energy. They can't feel that true body language that's missing in a video interview. So we want to look at it from a positive lens and say, this is an opportunity for us to just take a little bit of an advantage of the scenario. It's not really cheating. This is our information about us. It's just helping us stay organized and structured. I know the tips in this video are very simplistic but I just want you to really be thinking about your screen setup, be thinking about having the notes below and the specific content that you're gonna to wanna to have in those notes. Keep it really simplistic, but this will absolutely help you. Just remember some of the critical items and a few critical items that are gonna help you have success. I really hope this helps. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. Thanks.